ओम श्री साई राम मातंग बदना आनंद सदना महादेव शिव शंभो नंदना मातंग वदना आनंद सदना माया विनाशक मूषक वाहन माता महेश्वरी भवानी नंदना महागणपते मंगल चरण महागणपते ओम श्री साई राम लाइफ इज अ गेम प्लेट लाइफ इज अ चैलेंज मीट इट लाइफ इज लव enjoy it life is a dream realize it life is a game life is a dream life is a challenge life is love life is all these four together they are not separate life vokate kada life is one life is a game swami says play it smilingly you cannot always oblige but at least you can speak obligingly or even refuse obligingly don't be rude to anyone if you cannot oblige fold your hands and you should in fact apologize from the person that you cannot help him or oblige him the fault is with you not with the person who is asking for your favor or help he is asking you are the giver if you cannot give the deficiency of that ability to give is with you not with the person who is asking you have applied your discrimination and you feel that you cannot give or you do not want to give or the person does not deserve to be given that is your decision but you should not be rude to that person being rude being insulting being hurting being humiliating is unacceptable to your own god who is residing in you as well as in the person who is asking your god is omnipresent kada he is universal god kada isn't it you believe that you are rama krishna allah jesus any god you believe that he resides and operates through all 
Sarvajiva Namaskaram, Sarvajiva Taraskaram. They both reach the same destination. There cannot be two gods, one accepting your Namaskaram and another accepting your Taraskaram. One accepting your obeisance, one accepting your insults, your humiliation, your rudeness. God is one. So when you are refusing your own God residing in and operating through the other person who is asking for something and if you cannot give, don't want to give, you don't feel like giving, just fold your hands to that God residing in him or her and say, sorry sir, I can't. I am sorry because I can't. That is the sign of humility, true humility. So life is a game. Play it smilingly. It's a sport. Be sporty. Sometimes you will lose, sometimes you will win. It is a game. Winning is not important. It is how you play the game that is important. <clears throat> and that is a big challenge. Every game has challenges. Swami says you can't have a game without any foul point, fault point. Everywhere there are boundaries, there are uh, goals, there are false steps in every game. You can't have a game. The soldiers in the chess cannot move like the queen. The king has its own restrictions. Even the king in the game of chess has restrictions of movement because he has to follow his own rules. The king has to follow the king's rules. King cannot behave like a soldier or a minister or a queen. Everybody has to perform his or her role within the rules designed, directed by the authorities who has invented the, any particular game and you cannot apply the rules of the chess in the game of cricket and vice versa. When you play billiards you have to play in an air conditioned room but you can't play cricket in an air conditioned hall. But game is a game. Every game has its own thrills, its own joys, its own excitement, its own skills, its own talents. A good player of cricket cannot be equally good in playing billiards. Though in both the games you have to hit the ball with the bat, the stick. But hitting a billiards ball, hitting a cricket ball is an altogether different ball game. <laughs> Isn't it? So we have to realize that life is a game. Every situation demands different reaction. You can't react to your subordinate or to your boss or your, to your wife or to your maid servant in the same manner. No ways. This is the mistake most of us do. Swami says you have five type of ladies, females in your house. Most of us. Our mother, our wife, our daughter, our maid servant and our sister. Some people have three, some have two or some have even one. But you can't behave with every one of them in the same fashion just because all of them are females or ladies. Mother is mother, wife is wife, daughter is daughter. Maid servant is a maid servant. You must respect them all equally. But you cannot treat them equally. This is with the game of life. And we are playing so many plays. Game is also called a play. So Swami says life is also a play. A game is also a play. You have to play so many different roles right from morning till evening. I am father to my son. I have to play father to my son. I have to play son to my father. Boss to my subordinate and subordinate to my boss. Even friend to my friend and enemy to my enemy. But that is only a play.
in a play in a drama if my own brother takes up the role of ravana or my own father is given the role of ravana i will abuse him as decided scripted and director directed by the director <clears throat> but at the back of my mind i will have to keep that the person playing role of ravana is my father that feeling would be there should be there so i will not take that opinion or prejudice against my father who has played just few minutes before the role of ravana a villain a characterless person i cannot take that feeling in my heart against my father just because he played ravana and i cannot glorify my own self just because i played rama my playing rama or my father playing ravana is a play but my father is a father and i am his son he has got all the nobility which he has he is a very good performer while playing just because his body structure is huge so he has been assigned the role of ravana and because my body structure is soft and sober so i am given the role of rama so simple it is the decision of the director we have to honor his decision and play and deliver dialogues dialogues are written also by the same script writer the same story writer same dialogue writer you cannot have two dialogue writers one for rama and another for ravana so this is a challenge and this is a game at the same time swami says even if somebody wants to give you moksha in exchange of your happiness your love your capacity to love and smile and be joyful and somebody says i am giving you moksha but you have to let go your this ability to smile to love and to laugh and be joyful or be happy you have to just renounce these because this is all maya and i'll give you such a vision you will never be able to laugh for anything or have joyful for because then you will treat everybody as a witness and nothing will affect you don't exchange your happiness your joyfulness your smile even for exchange of moksha so long as you are in this body in this human birth it is your birth right to be happy it is your birth right to be loved and to love and to smile animals can't do that it is your privilege your role play you don't exchange it even for moksha what is moksha moksha is mohaksha when you leave that sense of attachment the sense of ownership or doership in your mind the sense of ownership and doership is in our minds physically you cannot grab even one piece of land you can't wear two dresses at a time you can't drive in two cars that is the physical limitations everything is in the mind you are what your mind is keep your mind joyful happy enlightened love lightens our heart and enlightens our mind hatred hardens our heart and darkens our minds so it is our duty our obligation as human being to love and be loved there cannot be greater blessings than that so life is a game play it smilingly life is a challenge fall as often as you must in any game you can't win all the time even tendulkar will not hit century in in, in every day no ways you can't hit sixer in every ball no one no one should also that will go to your head
we have to fall sometimes fall as often as you must but do not lie down like a rock rebound rebounds like a rubber ball to attain the summit from where you had the fall fall as often as you must but do not lie down like a rock rebounds like a rubber ball be like a rubber ball so you can rebound rebounds not like a rock getting extra emotional we become heavy when we get emotional it is addiction initially we enjoy it it gives us some kick emotion is great power it is like a drug it gives us kick but little overdose when we are gone then we become like a rock then we cannot come up from that self created depression depressions are self created no external agency is responsible for that they play their role definitely they, they play their part but we have capacity to ignore it fight it out or even renounce it let go let god this confidence can come only when you have confidence in the self self confidence is confidence in the self your own real highest purest truest noblest self not your body self not your mind self intellectual self or emotional self and your higher self is all pervasive as you move from earth water fire ether sound to ether the pervasiveness the capacity to expand enhances water is more fluid more free than earth fire is has got more capacity to spread than even water sound can go beyond even more than fire and ether is all pervasive the sky and this our highest self is even beyond that so it is all pervasive it is the energy that makes your eyes see your ears hear once that is gone you are dead swami said suppose if it is raining very heavily suddenly and somebody is carrying body of his father dead body and suddenly it rains you go to your nearest relative or friend shop nearby or house nearby and tell them sir it is suddenly raining very heavily can we keep this body for one or two hours just outside your shop or outside your house nobody would allow if you have very costly shoes and you run to the same person brother i suddenly raining these are very costly shoes can you keep my shoes for some time he'll say no issue just wrap it and keep it in the corner no problem just imagine our dead bodies are not even worth our shoes all this arrogance ignorance is all foolishness so life is a challenge meet it life is love enjoy it life is a game play it but ultimately the truth is life is a dream we have to realize it unless we have this absolute truth the ultimate truth that life is a dream being played on the screen keep that truth at the back of your mind then alone we can play it smilingly otherwise we'll get hurt very anybody telling us 
forget telling us or abusing us that is a different story if some vip is moving passing by some director is passing by if the lower staff does not say saira <laughs> or good morning to that person they he is or her ego is hurt or you just turn your face when your boss is passing by his or her ego is hurt immediately instantly you may not utter a word you may be in your own different world you may not mean to insult him but he feels offended that is the degree of sensitivity of our modern times because we are not enlightened enough we are informed well informed and well trained animals are well trained we are additionally well informed <clears throat> but our emotions our feelings our spiritual vibrations our reactions they are not mature enough you can't train a bud to blossom overnight it it is is unthinkable it is a natural process when the bud blossoms and the flower blossoms into fruit it ripens on the tree the taste of that fruit that mango would be incomparably more fragrant and sweet than the mango which is made to ripe and with some chemicals in the storage rooms this is an open fact so natural blossoming comes with spiritual understanding and awareness it is not a switch on and switch off process that awareness comes with the grace of god and grace of god can be attracted only when we prove to that authority that yes we are ready to accept and hold on to his grace it is like the connecting wire it has to have that capacity to channelize the powerful current passing through it a thin wire of low capacity will burst it will burst the equipment also if the high voltage current is allowed to pass through it so that maturity of mind that common sense together they attract the grace and the awareness and it comes easily abundantly when we start loving because love is that light that works as a catalyst for bringing down the light of awareness and god is love love is god that is why we have to keep connected to our own god self all the time we think that we are obliging god by going once or twice to his mandir or once or twice in a week to his mosque or church or mandir we are losing we have to keep connected to our the highest power which is available to us free of cost all the time we can keep connected what is bothering us we feel keep keeping connected with god is that means we will not be able to do our mischiefs that is why our mind creates that fear so we keep god in some temple in some mosque in some church so that we can go and pray whenever we want and rest of the time we can do the mischief that means our mind can do the mischief mischief is done by our human mind <clears throat> swami says be a master mind master your mind and be a master mind how can your master dictate the terms to you it is like your subordinate your servant dictating you the boss yes mind is required man is mind you can't run any business without a subordinate yes but it should not sit on your head the mind should not sit on your head it should be in your control master your mind and be a master mind that you can only when you know that in fact you are the master you are that universal consciousness and this mind this body 
this intelligence or your the instruments the garments the dresses given to you gifted to you by the director by the cosmic director to perform your role play your assigned role play that's it that is their value that is their purpose you are not your body body belongs to you you are not the mind my mind my intelligence my body my senses why you want to follow swami says the senseless mind and mindless senses are you so foolish they are making fool out of you be a master then you play the game you enjoy also no problem life is love enjoy it but doing mischief is not enjoying <clears throat> mischief when kids do mischief you enjoy it little bit but once you become mature you are not supposed to do mischiefs you are supposed to react you respond in a very mature manner why you want to be mischievous all your life you tell your mind you don't allow your children to be behaving like kids all their lives is it not your mind is like your child you don't have to be very strict very imposing no ways you have to make friendship with it at the same time while making friendship there has to be lakshman rekha today in the name of modern society the fathers because they cannot control their children in their minds they know that my child is not going to obey me they know it for sure my son is not going to listen to me even a 10 year boy is not going to listen to his father they know it so what they do oh i treat my son as my friend and the father the son will drink in front of father he will refuse father i mean abuse father and they will laugh it out why because they have no other option so they create this so called modern uh yeah what to call it just because they cannot act as father fathers have become financer you call any father and when son calls okay you don't disturb me the father will tell only one thing now don't disturb me tell me what you want i'll bring fathers have become financers so they don't command respect and when they demand respect which they don't actually command they have to face the music so there is a skip route oh i treat my son as my friend you have no other option my dear sir and what friendship okay you be friend to your son that's very fine but your son abusing you in front of others your son drinking in front of you smoking in front of you and putting the smoke on your face you would not allow your friend also to do that you are a helpless person accept it and it is your fault not child's fault swami used to say it is all tali tandri fault it is fault of mother and father they never trained they never put and you have to demonstrate suppose you want to teach swami says any good qualities to your children you have to demonstrate by your own example you can't be drinking and telling your son not to drink you can't be smoking in front of your children and telling them that smoking is injurious for health nobody will take you seriously you can't be telling your son tell the person on the phone that i am not at home and is still expecting him to be a truthful person we have to set an example as parents demonstrate mother is the first teacher of every child that is why swami used to say if any child is going wrong ways or misbehaving or misconducting the fault lies with talli tanri the mother and father they did not play their roles properly they did not perform their duties and once it becomes out of hand then make friendship compromise 
so that is why all these four injunctions know that life is a dream don't take anything seriously in life don't become serious about any situation there is nothing in the entire universe worth getting serious about agitated about afraid about or even impressed about but game you have to play the drama role you have to play play it perform it with the best of your abilities your skills your talent be the best performers to please god perform to please him when you perform to please him it has to be best swami boys give their best always in everything because they know they have to please swami they are respected all over by everybody because they are his boys swami once told in one of the discourses in the institute he gave a very small story he said once the garuda of narayana he had to bring message from narayana to kailasha the message was to be delivered to shiva so as soon as the garuda comes to kailasha the snake around shiva garuda and this garuda and snakes are eternal enemies <laughs> so the snake started showing its garuda was going round and round and snake thought now i will not allow this garuda to come here then garuda garuda it seems told the snake you think that you are more powerful than me i am not attacking you just because you are around my lord shiva just come down i'll show you <laughs> who is more powerful so i told the boys people respect you do you think it is because of your qualities no ways they respect you because you belong to swami just leave swami and go and live in the world you will know your real worth this is what exactly he told i was there in the discourse and that is a fact for every one of us we are what we are we get what we get only because that hero is with us otherwise we all are zeros any number of zeros added ultimate result is zero but when one stands beside us or we choose to stand behind that one our value enhances every zero multiplies our values and that one Swami says is the real hero, and that is Satya Sai Baba. No one else. Satya Sai Baba, the omnipresent, the cosmic authority. We have to play our game 